Hello skaters! In this video, I'll explain slideboard, the exercise slideboard for all of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Victor Halthorpe, two times Olympian and professional speed skater inline and ice. Slideboard is a great concept and in this video I am gonna go into details with everything from equipment to how, why, protocols, drills, whatever you can do on a slideboard and why you should do it. And I will be doing it with this Werbanes equipment because it simply makes me better for the time and the effort I put in as I train. Thanks for tuning in. If you follow me here on YouTube or on Instagram, you've probably seen me do these workouts on the slideboard where we slide from side to side on a very slippery board with some special socks on to imitate our ice skating or inline skating technique and to really just dial in the details on how we want to skate technically slow down the movement and we have the option of having a mirror right in front of us and a coach next to us so that we can improve in that way but there's so much more to it than what you've seen in my instagram videos and in this video i will just try and and guide you to how you can do this at home on your own to become a better skater the first thing we would want to look at is the equipment where do you get a good slide board and how long how should it be so uh to give some indications it should be about two meters 20. some coaches out there would probably argue that the longer legs you have the bigger a skater you are the longer a board or the longer a width you should have um I don't think it's super important how long it is and I personally like to keep it a bit shorter because I don't think what you improve on a slide board is the gliding phase. I do think that is the part and the portion of the movement where you are as far from actual skating as you can be. So I think it's more the alignment of the legs, it's more that recovery movement and setting yourself up for a push that we can really benefit from having a slide board. So I wouldn't worry too much about the width of it. Of course, it has to be comfortable. So if you're just bouncing back and forth on a really short board, it would make sense. And same if it's too long and too far for you to, you know, make it over there without having to make an awkward power push. Well, then it's probably too long. The good brands, they do have the option of moving the length of it, which is super nice. Then you can just use the length that shoots you. It also depends a lot on how well it glides, which is the next thing. Any spray that can make a car shine is pretty good for slide board surfaces. So try and use that for slide board and then use some, some nice nylon socks. Uh, we bought the leggings kind of that women wear. Um, and then we just wrap one or at times two of those uh, nylon socks around our shoes. Try and use flat shoes. Don't go for like, even though it's comfortable for running, don't go for like bouncy and, and a lot of cushioned, uh, strong cushioned running shoes. So I use, um, the Nike Metcons uh, that are, I think they're meant to be uh, CrossFit shoes. I also use them in the weight room because they're just really nice all round shoes. So that would also be a really good suggestion for the slide board. If we go into the board itself, it obviously has to glide. Well, at each side of it, you will find these two blocks that will stop you. So find a slide board that glides. Well, there's some brands out there that are specialized in this. Um, the one we use here in the United States is called Ultra Slide. That is also the one I had the best experiences with. So that is the one I recommend. Downsides, it's very heavy. It is also pricey. I've been using one from a company called SmartSkate. Uh, I'll leave some links below to all this that I really liked. It's a portable one. So I can simply just fold in and then unfold it where I would need it. So I can use it for warm up or I can use it for a training session anywhere on the go, which is very convenient, especially since I never really do slide board um, only training session. So I always incorporate it with other things. And then it is a little easier if you can just rip, wrap that thing out and then go for it. So Ultra, Sh Ultra Slide and Smart Skate are the two brands that I've been using. I did actually start out when I was only 13 years old by making my own slide board, which worked quite well. And honestly, in the clubhouse of where I train when I'm back in Denmark, Slagels, even though this is 15 years ago, that board is still there and is still being used, so it can't have been that bad. Just find some solid tree or solid wood that'll last for a long time that is coated in a way that you can slide on it. Then you can always use that spray I talked about to make it glide even better. Now let's talk about technique, my favorite part. And the main reason I do slide board, I don't do it for the physical benefits. I don't do it to get stronger. I do find that there's other ways where we can improve muscle strength and especially cardio. So what I do find slide board useful to is to work on a few specific things technically. I will just show some video here of me 
on a slide board and then I will try and divide it in three phases, three steps where you can work on your technique. Um, so the first one would be the, the setting yourself up, the loading phase, the position part of it. So that's when you're at the end of the slide board and you try and get everything aligned, pretending this is the leg carrying a weight and this is the other way, leg coming around and leg and how you put that down and um, initiate that weight transfer. Super crucial thing for the timing of it and for how you can use your body weight to push off and generate power on the ice. So for me, that's the most important thing um, to focus on on a slide board. So try and do that well, really get everything aligned. If you do have a mirror, that is, that will be awesome. It's, it's a massive benefit. So try and find a mirror or, or maybe just record yourself and review that in the rest time in between. So get that mirror in front of you and then you can see how everything aligns. The shoulder should be flat and then that leg comes from behind and smoothly passes the other leg. And then that pushes you off with the hips first. Um, this is the thing that takes years and years to get smoothly. The main thing that I would focus on here is to not stop, make it a constant motion of that leg coming together. Because if you stop there on your skates, it will be generating an entirely new push and you got to muscle through that. But if you manage to use that momentum, the leverage that you get from that recovery leg to generate the next push, it's going to be a really nice rhythm that's basically just going to propel you forward as you, as you switch legs. The next step will be the gliding face. And like I just mentioned, try and lead with your hip, but this is where the slide board is very limiting. You, or limiting. you cannot get on the outer edge of it because then you're going to tilt. So you can't actually lean the way you can do on inlines or ice skates, which is why it can be, I mean, I would say that's the biggest downside of it, that you can generate some bad habits here because in some ways you will have to change your technique. So the gliding phase, the things you would want to really try and focus on is to get as much of your body weight as you can onto the leg that slides, the one that you should have all your weight on actually. You also wanna make sure your knees are not caving in because again, to not tilt over, especially when we get to the other side of the slide board, is it's more, it's, it's simple and it's natural for us to have the body weight, the center of gravity in the middle of our legs here because then when we hit the other border, we're not gonna tilt over. Try and get away from that. It is okay to tilt over, you can just put a hand down. So really try and work on that and, and get your knees spread out. And ideally you want to do it almost as if this was a dry line exercise where you got everything lined up, the, the shoulder, the knee, the toe on one side and the other leg fully extended to the side as you glide. And then just be as stable as you can. No rocking, no tilting, no wobbly knees. This will take a while. To, uh, to get fixed, but that's the good thing about the slide board. You can do this at whatever pace you want and as much as you want, basically. So you glide over to the other side and then the final, the third phase is here, the recovery movement, which is also really nice because we can emphasize that. And again, we can review how we do it and we can do it over and over with less fatigue and more time than on actual skates. So make sure you do a smooth circle behind with that recovery leg. And then obviously we go back to the first step where we use that recovery leg as it comes together to generate speed, power into another push. But really take your time, focus on your upper body because as we know it from a lot of dryland exercises and skating, when that comes together, we tempt to pull other things out of position because that will shift around where we have the body weight. But that's where you just gotta let it sit in the hips and be very solid and keep your position. So try and almost isolate that when you bring it back together and do a nice circle. The bigger the better, as long as you can keep that position. Line it up and push across. Again, I mentioned there's some bad habits and this is also the reason, which we're gonna come to next, that I don't use it that much actually. I use it to engage these things. I use it mostly in the summer. I use it mostly as part of a workout. Um, if we're doing this summer, for example, I did a lot of short track skating where this basically just turns to keep my, you know, straightaways good. I, I supplement it with a bit of slide board. I have never done slide board for more than an hour long sessions because I, I do think it's good for some things, but um, it also has these bad habits that we bring along if we overdo it, I think. In the preseason over the summer, I used it a lot as an inline skater for rainy days. Uh, then it can be better than or even snowing. If it's snowing outside, you can't skate at all. If the weather is too wild, then 
it is a really nice feature to almost skate indoors. Um, so I really liked it for that. The way I would set up these sessions would either be as a warm up or a post skating thing where I'm, I just had the options of slowing things down and working on these small technical things. A bit like I would do technical dryland exercises or turn belt. So uh, to give you an idea if I do it together with a workout, I would do really short periods at the time. For warm up, we're talking maybe 30 seconds to do eight times 30 seconds with 30 seconds rest and, and just think about what I'm doing here. And if I do it after a training session, maybe I'll go a little harder, but I would probably limit it to 60 or 90 seconds with about a minute rest in between. So it never really gets that hard because I do just do it to fix a few technical things. If you do it as a standalone training session, you can of course go for a little longer. If you're a sprinter, keep it low. Um, so obviously shorter periods of time, but maybe 30 to 45 seconds of on time and about the same off time. Um, as a long distance skater, I would go up to two, three minutes because I feel like that's as long as I can really keep things in control and actually get some positive technical changes out of it. So that would be my suggestion. A good slideboard session could be combined with dryland. And then to give you an example, eight times two minutes on, one minute or two minutes off and then you have a pretty solid session there if you're not used to it you will get really sore because you engage so many other muscles as you slide across because there's just so many things to keep in place but slideboard is a pretty sweet tool and i do find it's a good replacement when you can't actually go out and skate for whatever reason that might be so i do suggest you look into slideboard skating and if you have any more questions that i did not answer in this video comment below and then as a final little thing i hope you all want to hop onto www.thorpskating.com it's my new site where i will be doing some really cool olympic gear giveaways and what gear is up to you guys so go in there and and let me know what gear you could be interested in and uh yeah sign up because there's so much more content than here on youtube uh it's just easy to have everything in the same place and i want to make a space just for skaters for now, um, all there's left to say is thanks a lot for watching this video and I hope to see you at some point soon. I'm Victor, see you around.